Amen. This is uh, part two tonight of uh, our message uh, that we started last week. It's called Labor Not for the Meat that Perishes. And it's part two. Uh, we began our message last week out of the uh, book of St. John chapter 6. And we'd like to start there again because that's where that scripture is written at. Our pilot scripture tonight here. And St. John chapter 6 and verses 27. The word of God says here, Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him have God the Father sealed. Now, right before this, you that are reading your Bibles, you know that uh, the Jews had took up uh, shipping to come across the sea to find the Lord because he had fed a multitude of over 5,000 on the mountain. And uh, they loved the Lord for the loaves, for the bread, for the fish, because their bellies were full. But they were not so interested in the word that Christ was preaching. They was not so interested in the salvation that he was bringing in his miracles. But they were just interested in our carnal things, in the meat that perishes. And the Lord was reproving them about that, uh, that appetite that they have, the carnal appetite, and was letting them know that they should seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and let these other things be added on to them by God. It says here, in verse 28, after the Lord told them that, they said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. Now, I know a lot of you, you read this chapter maybe over and over again. Your false prophet in these false churches, I'm sure he's reading this scripture over and over again with no understanding. The veil is upon your hearts. We're saying the true work of God is not a work of the flesh, a work that uh, you could just go find in some school, you know, get some training in some school or something like that. We're talking about a work of the spirit and a work of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord told them, you know, they were curious, what is the work of God? And uh, a lot of you probably think you're doing the work of God, but uh, it's obvious that you can't be because look at all the different uh, denominations, all the different faiths and doctrines. So someone is doing a work of their flesh. It's obvious. It says here, the Lord says, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. And a lot of you say that you believe on Jesus Christ. Uh, 90%, maybe 95% of those religions that I just named off say they believe in Jesus, but they don't because there's no, uh, you know, uh, 99 or 1,000 Jesuses. There's only one Christ, and he only has one doctrine. God only sent him with one true doctrine. But the thing is, in these last days, so many of uh, men have picked up their Bibles and ran and established these other faiths that the Lord did not establish. We're saying here, the true work of God will set you free from sin. And uh, we're saying you that in these false religions, you know that you're still in sin. So as long as you're in sin, even though you say with your mouth that you're believing in Christ, if you're still in sin, you're still in the flesh and the Lord doesn't know you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. It says here, they said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? You see, the flesh always want to see something. They want to see someone speaking in tongues. They want to see someone jumping up and shouting, I know he has the Holy Ghost because I heard him or her speak in tongues. They say that's the evidence. That's not necessarily the evidence. Because if you're speaking in tongues, I'm not, uh, as it were, against speaking in tongues. But if you're speaking in tongues 
and you don't have no one to interpret what you're saying, the scripture says you need to be silent in the church. You know, the Lord ain't the author of confusion, just have you speaking in all of these tongues and no one doesn't know anything about what you're saying. That's just confusion. That's the spirit of the devil and it's not really the spirit of Jesus Christ. You read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Tongues is one of the least gifts in the body of Christ. And it says if there's no interpreter, be silent in the church of God. But you want to see something. You want to see how someone can speak in tongue. And if only I could speak in tongue, I know, you know, I know the Lord. If I can jump and shout, you know, and sweat, I know that I know the Lord. If I can get up in the choir and sing so nice, you know, I know I know the Lord. Or if I give 10% of my money, that's my evidence or proof that I know the Lord. Well, we're saying those are just works of the law and works of the flesh. And that's not the proof that you know the Lord. You see, this is a work of faith. We're talking about believing in Jesus Christ, believing in godliness in the flesh, living a life free from sin as you pick up your cross and mortify the deeds of the body. This is not a work that you can see. This is not a work of the flesh that anybody can just grab his Bible and go and do this work. This is a work of faith to live a life free from sin by the grace of God. As you hear this true doctrine that you're hearing tonight, this doctrine is not of men. We haven't received it of men. We're not preaching it for men. But this doctrine was manifested onto us. This is that heavenly doctrine. And we are partakers of that heavenly doctrine that the Lord has sent in these last days. And if you can hear this word today and believe it by the grace of God, the word of God say today, if you can hear my voice, harden not your hearts. It says here, verse 30, they said therefore unto him, what sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? What is this kind of work that you work, Lord? You know, and a lot of you don't really understand the work of God. And the work that the Lord came all the way down from heaven to show unto the world is that they must put their flesh to death by faith in Jesus Christ. Now that's a work there that you don't really want to do. To put your own flesh to death. To put sin in your flesh to death. To mortify your eyes and put that, uh, them eyes full of adultery to death, to turn from your fornication, to turn from your lust and your lasciviousness and your incense and things like that, that you're committing with your own family members. We're saying by the grace of God is hard to turn from your own lust, but that's that uh, bread, that's that heavenly doctrine that the Lord came down from heaven and showed onto the world. Verily, verily, the Lord says, I say unto thee, except a man eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, he has no life in him. It says here, what is this work that thou worketh? Verse 31, our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, a lot of you saying that I know, you know, I already have my religion, Brother Joseph. Just like the Jews were saying the same thing. You know, uh, Moses already gave us the law. We already have our own doctrine. What more do we need? We don't need your doctrine. But we're saying to you, just like Jesus said to the Jews, Moses didn't give you that true bread that came down from heaven. We're saying the false prophets are not giving you that true bread either. They're not telling you to pick up the cross and mortify the deeds of the body through faith in Jesus Christ. We're saying the Lord told them right here in verse 31, verse 32, rather, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread. Let's look at this true bread here, that so many of you have a hard time to eat of this true bread. You got to labor in order to eat of this true bread. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ in order to eat 
of this true bread of God. But if you love your sin, you can never eat of this bread that we're talking about, this heavenly manna. You can never eat of this bread in your sins. You have to have a repentant spirit, a repentant heart to turn from your sins, to turn from your iniquities, because Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. It says the flesh doesn't profit by the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Your flesh might profit in the Baptist doctrine. Your flesh might profit in the Seventh-day Adventist doctrine. They tell you you got to have a big education in this world. You got to have a lot of worldly wisdom. You got to go get your diplomas and your bachelor's degrees and master's degrees. Your flesh might profit in the false prophet's religion, but your flesh is not going to profit in the true gospel of Jesus Christ. The flesh must be put to death that the new man might be able to live, Christ is saying. It says here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life onto the world. The flesh still doesn't get the uh, picture yet. It says here, then said they unto him, evermore, give us this bread. A lot of you want eternal life. You don't want to go to hell, which you're on your way to hell now if you're still in your sins. But I know you don't want to go to hell. That's why you go to your false religions, that you might feel justified even though you're still in sin. But we're saying your false religion is a lie. It can't deliver you from sin. If you're still in sin, you're still in the flesh, and the Lord doesn't know you. We're saying you might want to be saved, but you want to keep your sins at the same time. You want to have your cake, and you want to eat it too. You want to be saved, yet you want to remain in your sins and just say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But it's not like that in Christ. The bread that the Lord brought down is that your flesh is of the devil. Your flesh must be put to death. You must come and have fellowship with God's true church that's preaching this heavenly doctrine that's against the flesh of men. It's against the sinful nature of men. We're saying this gospel that came down from heaven, if you eat thereof, it'll mortify the deeds of the body. If Christ be in you, the scripture says, the body is dead because of sin. That's what this doctrine does by the grace of God. It teaches you to mortify the deeds of the flesh. They said, verse 34, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. So many of you saying, Lord, I want to be saved. But when you find out what salvation is really all about, then you don't want to be saved. Salvation is about, you can't have uh, two living wives if your first wife is still alive and you divorce her or put her away and then you marry another woman, you can't be saved. That's adultery. You're in adultery. If your first husband is still alive and then you divorce him and then say, now I want to be saved and go to one of them false denominations, that's adultery. You're going to have to leave that second husband. Only thing that can break up a marriage or separate that marriage is death. We're telling you that. Like your false prophet is saying it's all right for you to get married again. Some of them will let you get married to someone in your same church. Divorce one woman in the church, marry someone else in the same church. We're saying those are false prophets. They're only in it for the business, for the money, and they're not really concerned about your souls. A lot of you want to be saved, but you don't know what salvation is all about. Salvation is about coming out of fornication. What is fornication? Fornication is any sexual activity outside of marriage. If you're not married, this thing about boyfriends and girlfriends and kissing and hugging and feeling and getting hot in the pants and you're not married, it's fornication. No fornicator, 
No whoremonger have any part in the kingdom of God. Do you still want this salvation? You see, the flesh talking about evermore, Lord, give us this bread. We're saying this doctrine that you're hearing today that's against the works of the flesh, that's against your adultery, that's against your fornication, that's against your lust. This is that manna that came down from heaven, and the Lord is saying if you would turn from your sins today, eat of his flesh, drink of his blood, and the kingdom of heaven will be made manifest in your mortal flesh. The word of God says here, verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. Thank you, Jesus. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. We go on down to verse 51. Where did God says here? Verse 50, rather. This is the bread that cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. We're talking about eating of that eternal life of God. We're talking about eating of the holiness of God. We're talking about eating the true doctrine, the true manner that will put your body to death that will put the sin in your flesh to death by the grace of God. Can you eat of this living bread tonight? Can you eat of this heavenly manna tonight by faith? Do you have faith tonight to turn from your false religious organizations? Do you have faith tonight to turn from the Trinitarian spirit? Do you have faith tonight to turn from the Baptist church that lets you smoke that let you be fornicators, that let you drink and party and have a good time? Do you have faith tonight to turn away from the Muslim religion that lets you hate the white man or hate your neighbor or want to kill your neighbor? No problem. Long as you believe in the Muslim religion, you can kill your neighbor. No problem. We're saying, do you have faith tonight to turn away from the Catholic religion, those pedophiles, the Catholic hierarchy, they're pedophiles, they're homosexuals, they're adulterers and fornicators. They say they know the Lord, but you look at their track record, they're always molesting children for many years. They're always molesting other priests and even the so-called nuns are having sex with all the women in those covenants, whatever you call them, those places where they worship at. It says here, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, can you eat of this doctrine tonight by the grace of God? Can you eat of this heavenly doctrine tonight by faith in Jesus Christ? Do you have ears to hear today by the grace of God? Turn from your sins today. Turn from your false religious organizations today. They can't do nothing for you. It's just idolatry. You're just going there. You're spending your money for nothing. They're not helping you. You've got the witness within yourself that you know you're still in sin. So why do you waste your money for something that can't even profit you? Let's look right here in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 1. The word of God says, Ho! Everyone that thirsteth, you that are thirsting for eternal life, you that are thirsting for righteousness, we're not talking about you hypocrites. We're not talking about you blasphemers that love your sin and want to just blaspheme the name of Christ. But we're talking about you that are sincerely seeking after righteousness tonight, you that are thirsty after righteousness tonight, ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come you to the waters, and he that have no money. You don't have to be so concerned about the true man of God begging you for your money, like the false prophet 
all the time. He's trying to get into your pocketbook. We're saying by the grace of God, uh, the true man of God uh, is not so concerned about your money uh, as much as he is about your soul. Uh, turn from your sins today. Uh, don't worry so much about money because uh, we're not worried about money. Uh, we've been on the air over three years uh, and never asked you for a dime uh, and we won't ask you for a dime. Uh, you've been listening to the broadcast. Uh, you've been getting edified. Uh, we ain't asked you to send us no tithes. Uh, we ain't asked you to send us no offerings. Uh, why? Uh, because we're concerned uh, about your souls uh, and not about your your pocketbook. Uh, the word of God says here, come to the true waters uh, if you're thirsty. Uh, come to the true church of God. Uh, the word of God says living waters uh, shall flow out of our bellies. Uh, and that's what you're hearing tonight. Uh, those living waters uh, that's coming forth out of the bellies uh, by the Holy Ghost. Uh, the word of God says here, come uh, without money. Uh, come and buy. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, come and eat. Uh, yea, come buy wine uh, and milk uh, without money uh, and without price. Uh, wherefore do you spend money uh, for that which is not bread? Uh, why do you give your tithes uh, to the Baptist preacher and he preaching to you a lie? Uh, why do you give your tithes uh, to the Baptist preacher and he preaching to you uh, about three unclean spirits uh, called by the name of Trinity? Uh, we're saying it's a lie. Uh, why do you give 10% of your money uh, and you're still in your sins? Uh, his doctrine uh, hasn't helped you. Uh, the doctrine uh, of the Catholics uh, haven't helped you. Uh, the doctrine uh, of the Seventh-day Adventists, uh, it hasn't helped you. Uh, you're still in your sins. Uh, you're still in your flesh. Uh, you're not in the kingdom of God. Uh, you don't know Christ. Uh, the word of God says here, uh, wherefore do you spend money uh, for that which is not bread? Uh, that's not the true bread of life uh, that came down from heaven. Uh, them false religious doctrines. Uh, the word of God says, uh, and you labor for that which satisfieth not. Uh, you laboring uh, so hard for the false prophet. Uh, you laboring uh, so hard for his business meeting. Uh, you laboring uh, so hard uh, to make these meetings. Uh, I'm on the pulpit committee. Uh, I'm on the committee uh, to get robes for the pastor. Uh, I'm on the committee, uh, the choir committee. Uh, I'm on the anniversary committee. Uh, I'm on this committee. Uh, you're laboring so hard uh, for the false prophet. Uh, he got you deceived. Uh, He's in your pocketbook uh, all the day long. Uh, you laboring uh, for that bread. Uh, you laboring uh, for that meat, uh, that false doctrine uh, that haven't profited. Uh, the false prophet, uh, that false doctrine uh, that haven't profited you. Uh, the word of God says here, uh, labor not uh, for that which satisfieth not. Uh, you know you're not satisfied. Uh, you come out of that false religious church uh, and your eyes uh, are still full of adultery. Uh, you come out of the false prophet's church uh, and you still lighten up your cigarettes. Uh, you come out of the false prophet's church uh, and you still lustful uh, as before you went in. Uh, it, the word of God tells me uh, that false doctrine, uh, it can't satisfy you. The word of God says, hearken diligently uh, unto me. Uh, have faith today. Uh, when you hear this true doctrine, uh, hearken diligently uh, unto me uh, and eat that which is good uh, and let your soul uh, delight itself in fatness. Uh, incline your ear uh, and come unto me here uh, and your soul shall live. Uh, can you hear the word of God tonight? Uh, we got a call on line five. Uh, we're going to get right to you, caller. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Amen. We hope tonight, as you heard, there's a difference. There's false doctrine that can't do nothing for your soul. That's not that manna, the true manna that came down from heaven. We're saying this true manna, if you eat thereof, eat of the flesh of Christ and drink of his blood, this true manna right here that came from heaven will give you life and give you that life more abundantly. We have a call at this time.